Welcome back on this Monday as we continue with Genesis chapter 6. Again, as we have gotten to this point, we have really moved from Adam now to Noah. Chapter 5 reviewed the genealogy moving up to that point, And we pick up with chapter 6, verse 1. When man began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of man were attractive, and they took as their wives as they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he, his, he is flesh. His days shall be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterwards. And the sons of God came in to the daughters of man, and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every intention and the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to the heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the earth, or face of the land, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heaven, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Wow, there's a lot going on in this passage. Uh, a couple things to note, especially in that first uh, four verses. It says, his days shall be 120 years. Some say that that is uh, how long God wanted man to live after that. And uh, that could be part of it. Another idea is that was how long it took for uh, the ark to be built, that he was giving man 120 more years until the flood would come. We really don't know for sure what that means. Uh, now, this 120 years, if that was the age of man, that man would live to be the, the oldest, that really didn't take effect until through the ages, through until at least after Abraham and Isaac and even Jacob lived past that time. So there is a questioning on that. Uh, other things that I'm sure brought into mind questions for you. Uh, the part where it says, this, when the sons of God came into the daughters of man and, and they bore children to them, who are the sons of God and who are the daughters of man? There are different ideas as to who the sons of God are. Um, I will give two, which I think are valid, and I'm just going to share one that I think is a bunch of uh, nonsense. First of all, sons of God, they may be believers in the promise, the promise that God gave to them of a one who would come to save them, the promises of God, a believer in the one true God. It could be that they were descendants of Seth. Remember, Seth was the one that was born after uh, Cain killed Abel. He could easily be considered, his line could be considered the sons of God. Um, the sons of God are not angels. Um, that's not how God created them. That's not how, how um, Moses, in writing Genesis, talks about uh, man. It says that that we were all made according to our kind. Um, that angels who are uh, really, if you look at the Bible, um, it, you get the understanding that they are sexless beings. How could they be sons of God? Um, messengers of God is what they are normally called, almost always called, except for one passage in Job, and we don't base doctrine on that alone. So again, the sons of God are most likely believers in the promises, descendants of Seth, but they're not angels. The daughter of man are those who don't believe in the Lord, uh, like Cain, maybe even the descendants of Cain, because he was angry with the Lord and would not have taught them the Lord's way. That is more of a likely idea. Um, and why would God be displeased with that? 
because the wives of the godless led their husbands astray, led man into godlessness. The Nephilim, uh, Nef Nephilim, sorry. Uh, that term is really uncertain in verse four. I know if you're reading other translations, it might read giants or, or maybe tyrants. We're not sure. One thing we do know is that they were not half angel and half man, as some people say. That is not true. Uh, what we know is that they were great men. Um, they were most likely strong men. It, call, it said that they were men, mighty men who were of old, men of renown. So these Nephilim, uh, I believe, were, were likely um, giants, uh, that they were likely uh, strong men, uh, but most likely they ruled over the others um, in an ungodly way. Uh, so not much. It's really hard. That is one of those words that in the Bible that we don't have a good understanding of what it means in the original language. Let's continue with verse 11. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. And God saw the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all the flesh on the earth, uh, for the, uh, of all the flesh, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. You see, even though he told uh, Noah what was going to happen, that he was going to destroy the earth, he then sought out a way that he would save the one who is righteous in God's eyes. Verse, um, verse uh, 20, uh, I'm sorry, 18 says, But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall come into the ark, you, your sons, your wives, your so and, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing and of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. This is the first use of a covenant. The covenant is a one-sided promise made by God. Um, and he gives that to, to Noah of his deliverance of Noah and his family in the ark. Noah did this, verse 22. Uh, he did all that God commanded him. Uh, Noah, it says he found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Why? Because Noah trusted in the Lord. He believed in the Lord. And that was shown through his faithful obedience. May God lead us to obey in that faithful way uh, as well. Because he is our true God. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow.